You're live with us here at the Solid Word International Ministries from beautiful Barbados. We thank you so much for joining us and for spending your time with us, whether you're watching us live or you're watching the replay. We say thank you for being here. I am Crystal J. Paul, and you're hearing, you're going to be hearing today the continuation of the series, A Struggle with Faith. And if you're struggling with faith, if you want to know more about Jesus Christ in whom we place our faith, we invite you definitely to send us a message and let us know how we can pray with you and how we can show you more about Jesus Christ himself. Well, I want to minister this hymn for you. In fact, this hymn was, was, is one of my favorites for so many years, even as it's a, a hymn of surrender and asking God to take your life and let it be consecrated to him, your heart, your voice, your hands, your feet. So I pray this will minister to you today. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow with ceaseless praise. Let them flow with ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee, filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose, every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine, Lord. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour. At thy feet is treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Good morning to you and welcome to the Solid Word this morning. We are so glad to have you here. Uh, we trust that you have been having a great weekend so far and that you have come to receive from the Lord that which he has for you this morning. It is a great, great uh, thing to be in the service of the Lord mm -hmm. and to be doing his bidding. Listen, friends. 
his return is imminent. Soon coming, King. You and I, we must be a people waiting for the coming King. Doing his bidding. You know, it'll be a sad thing when we get to heaven. And we stand and see those who are being judged. And we see the persons that we claim to love head into the judgment throne, the great white throne judgment. We hear their judgment. I wonder, you know, sometimes I wonder if that's the reason why the Bible said they'll be crying in heaven. Tears being shed because those of us who know the truth and are saved and see the one we claim to love in this earth are going to be judged forever and ever and ever. We must be about our Father's business in this hour, in this time. There are souls that are waiting on us to do what God has called us to do. You know, many of us cannot be preachers. Many kind of missionaries, but you can be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. You can allow your life to testify of Him. You can be that example. And when people look at you, they say, I want to be like that. I want to be more like Jesus. You can be like your Father in heaven and not like the Father of lies, of deceit. Not like the Father, my friend, this morning. Who deceives others, the devil himself. I wonder sometimes if Christians realize how much they mirror the enemy of our souls by the way they behave, the way they act. I wonder if they realize how much they look like him and not like their father, the creator of heaven and earth. Friends, time is short. His return is soon. Soon you and I are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of what we're doing on this earth. Listen to me. These are not just words, friends. Please do not take it as just words. They are important. Mm -hmm are very important. We thank you so much for joining us this morning once again. We're praying for our ministry here, the Solid Word International Ministries. Thank you for your encouragement. Now, book series, the Solid Word book series, please continue praying for us, praying for the book series. You can go to the to Amazon. We leave, leave a link in the in the in the in, the, in, in below so you can find our books on Amazon. You can go there and support this ministry. And we do have a lot more books to to, to, to produce. You've been hearing me send it for a long time now, and that's because we need to get some more books produced. We do have them written already, my daughter and I, and we need help getting them done. By your uh, contribution and purchasing those books will help us to make that possible. And you can go to my wife's website. We are thinking of doing some more songs this year. We have some more, some more songs written already. We want to get them uh, uh, produced. And uh, you go to my wife's website and you can find uh, our songs there. And hopefully by your help, by your purchase, we can um, get them done, okay? And our our books are there too. Our songs, our books are there. Our devotional book, and we want to thank you so much for for that, okay? Tell you what, I'm gonna let her give this announcement. Uh, she has a special going this month, and uh, on her courses and. 
I want her to come and give this an upliftment. I'm going to come back, okay? <laughs> All right, so it is August, and this month I'll be 45 years old. Wow. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> but anyways, God has been good. Very and nice. uh, as my gift to you, I'm offering a 45% off special. 45, 4, 5 percent, not one, not two, not three, not, not even two, five, four, zero, but four, five, 45 percent off special for my birthday. And this is on my courses, my online courses and my downloads. My courses would be become God's best version of you. Meditate with the Holy Spirit to grow deeper and soar higher in Christ. And this is for the woman of God who knows that she was made for more. She wants to fulfill a purpose and is serious about fulfilling purpose. And she wants to learn how to hear from the Holy Spirit in order to get there. Then, as I say, you 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 transform your mind and then you empower your speech to speak the things, right. the divine message that God has given to you. So we have empower your speech where I teach everything that I've learned for the past 40 years as a singer, then gospel artist, radio announcer, Toastmaster. I'm certified in voice and speech. I teach you on enunciation, pronunciation, diction, how to speak before an audience, the things, how to get ready, tongue exercises, deep breathing, and all the things you need to know to get you ready to speak before an audience, whether as a current or aspiring speaker, teacher, podcaster, YouTuber, once you need to get that message out. We are in the last days and we don't have time to waste. That's right. So we need to equip ourselves in order to get the things done. 45% off. And my downloads as well. Meditation cards, meditation wallpapers, and you can check out my website, christajpaul.com. The link is in the caption below. Thank you so much. So you can go to christajpaul.com and you can see all those wonderful, beautiful uh, stuff Thanks, there, offerings, offerings for you, okay? Um, uh, and notes. It'll be good for you. All right? Thank you so much for that. If you have your Bibles again, we are going to kind of recap from last week and try to go ahead this week. Last week, the internet was crazy. It was in and out, in and out, and then they shut down. And and we um, we, sorry, we, we, we apologize for that. Um, we'll be under control, and so we're going to go back, because I think this message is important for folks to hear, and so we're going to do some recapping on this program, on this message, and then try to get ahead, okay? We're in the book of John and chapter 18, we're going to read that, we've been going through that for the past couple of weeks, I trust you've been blessed so far by it. And um, and John 18, verse 33. And Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Are thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, and I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth. When he had said this, 
He went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Father, thank you for this time that we can spend in your word. Bless it to our hearts, O oh God. Holy Spirit of God, speak to each heart in the reach of my voice. They may know the truth. And indeed, Lord God, the truth indeed will set them free. But God, every saint of God needs to live by the truth. Thank you for what you do now. In this time, this day, we ask these things in the name of your only begotten Son, Yeshua the Christ. Amen. Amen. We've been examining the topic of struggle with faith. We have came to the place where we are talking about accepting truth because there are many in the world today who are finding it difficult, struggling, believers, when it comes to accepting truth. We see that believers today, those who call themselves believers, readily accept lies. Even when confronted with the truth. When the, the younger generation looks on and see the older generation behaving in such manner, it becomes even a greater struggle for them. What is truth? The question Pilate was struggling with, the question folks that they are struggling with. We said that truth is defined as that which confirms with fact or reality. It is genuineness, veracity, actuality. We came to the conclusion that truth in one sentence is Jesus Christ. We talk much about truth being divine. It's from above. It is not of this world. It is not what the crowd speculates or something to be. It is not determined by popular opinion polls. Polls. It is not discovered by public surveys. It is not human tradition. Truth can be known only by divine revelation. We said truth is absolute. Without God, there cannot be any absolutes. Without absolutes, we said, there can be no objective, universal truth. Without absolutes, truth becomes subject to relative and pragmatic becomes relative and pragmatic without absolutes truth gives way to a mere personal or cultural preference we said truth is singular that is to say truth is a singular entity it does not exist in bits and pieces of unrelated ideas or disconnected data. We are looking at several reasons why accepting truth can be difficult. We said because of cognitive dissonance, dissonance, folks find it difficult to accept truth. In other words, there's a mental discomfort that takes place when the truth contradicts our existing beliefs, values, or perceptions. There's another reason why folks find it difficult to accept truth is because of emotional pain, fear of change, impact on self-identity, social repercussions, our pride and ego oftentimes 
causes difficulty in accepting truth. We, we, we look back or we, we turn to a psychological defense mechanism or entrenched beliefs cause us not to accept truth. This morning, we are looking at misinformation, disinformation, and ignorance causes folks not to accept truth. I want to begin this morning by pointing out to us that we are responsible for the information we accept. It's not enough to say, well, the pastor made me believe it is his fault. Or the politician was too good with his words. I, I had to believe him. We are warned to be careful of the words we speak and the words we receive. Scripture tells us in 2 Timothy 2, 15-18, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their words will eat as other conquer, of whom is Hymenius, and Philetus, who concern the truth, have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. This passage is very important for us to understand in light of what we're dealing with this morning. The scripture says that we should not that we should, sorry, that we should study not to accept what man, whatsoever man says to us. It is our responsibility to make sure we are getting truth. Study to show yourself a proof unto God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Then it says to us, to shun some things, literally, keep far away from these things. You are not supposed to be here me this morning, Christians. We get into all kind of conversations, and we have all kind of friends and cliques that we join up to. There are some things we're not supposed to be doing. Shun profane. And vain babblings. You're not supposed to be in every conversation. Some things are not profitable for you. If you cannot stop it, then remove yourself from its presence or their presence. Why? Because profane and vain babblings does not draw you closer to God. These conversations that goes on, sometimes they are so devilish, changes your mind. And it will change your heart over time. This is what the word says. It doesn't draw you close to God. It doesn't edify, but rather it increases to more ungodliness. The scripture says to us that their words doth eat like a conqueror. The word conquer in, the, in this verse refers to a destructive spreading infection or disease. Just like a conqueror can eat away at a plant or tree. And over time brings death to it. The false teachings of the examples that Paul uses here, Hymenius and Philetus, corroded and weakened the faith of some believers, bringing death to them. These men did not deny the resurrection. That's what we have today. 
They did not deny the resurrection, but what they did, they corrupted that sacred scripture. Verse 18 of 2 Timothy 2 tells us, who concerning the truth of error, saying, this is what they did, the resurrection is past already. I'm going to say something you can identify with, but I'm not going to give you the whole information or the right information. Listen to me, my friends. The persons you are listening to today, the songs you are plugged into, every chance you get, you think it's not affecting you. But it is taking its time, poisoning you slowly. The scripture says to us to shun profane and vain Babylon. Persistently avoid them. Get away from it. In 1 Corinthians 15.33 the apostle is speaking again to the company we keep. The words we listen from them. And listen what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. The word rendered here, communication, means... A being together, companionship, close contact to converse. The click you link with today can be that destroyer of your good manners, of your good way of life. You ever see people hanging out together? I see it firsthand. And all of a sudden, they start talking like each other. Mm -hmm. I worked at a government office here in Barbados, and I saw that clearly. The guys, when they have free time, they gather on the, on the front of the building, and they talk. And I can, I go over there sometime and listen to them. But when they start talking foolishness, I walk away. It became such a sight to see for me that when they would begin to talk foolishness, the guys would say, Paul, excuse us a minute. We're going to talk some foolishness now. Because before when they begin to talk, I would tell them, you know, man, you're going to talk, you know, you have to talk like this. You don't have to be like this all the time. So when they want to talk, about you, they say, Paul, pa, excuse us. And I would just leave. But I would see them talking like each other, same slangs, the same content. Yeah. It may be happening to you today. But there's one thing to do, my friend. Take the warnings of the scripture. What you receive and what you give out. Because evil communication does corrupt good manners. Don't be deceived, he says. Don't think it will never happen to me. I do strong. It refers to this course. Not to this course only, but to contact or companionship. The Apostle Paul quotes these words from Menander. Hope I'm pronouncing his, his name right. Menander, a Greek poet. Menander was a celebrated comic poet of Athens, educated under Theophratus. His writings were Repeated or repeat with elegance and refined wit and judicious observations. Of 100 
and eight comedians which or, co or comedies which he wrote, nothing remains but a few fragments. He is said to have drowned himself at the age of 52 in Antonio 9, 93 BC because the compositions of his rival Philemon obtained more applause than his. It is implied in this quote here from him that there were some persons who were endeavoring to corrupt the minds from the simplicity of the gospel. The sentiments of this passage is that the contact of evil minded men or that the close relationship or friendship and conversation of those who hold erroneous opinions or who are impure in their lives tends to corrupt the minds, the heart, the sentiments of others. In particular, the thing of which Paul here applies, it is the subject of the resurrection, just like in our passage. Such contact would tend to corrupt the simplicity of their faith and pervert their views of the truth of the gospel and thus corrupt their lives. It is always true that such contact has a pernicious, a pernicious uh, effect on the mind and the heart. It is done, and this, I got this from Barnes, it is done by their direct effort and corrupt the opinions and to lead others into sin. And also it is done by the secret silent influence of their words and conversations an example we find it a lot today religious leaders who are misusing the word of God adding to it saying things that the word of God is not saying because they want to be financially successful but well, they want to heap a whole bunch of people to themselves. We find that as they draw people in, they destroy them more with their words, with their influence. And the apostle says, be careful, be not deceived. Don't think you can be caught in this because you are so well versed. There are many today, my friend, who know the Bible a lot and who are caught in the trap of what's going on right now in the world. And they're speaking the same lies as the people who are speaking them. People who are wicked and you can see their wickedness and how they communicate, how they act, what they say. There are Christians today who are saying that these people are called by God and they're ordained by God. Still doing wicked things. Come on, man. You and I got to be most Smarter than that. If we study the shows of proven to God, rightly dividing the word of truth, we will never form these things. But when we think that we got it all, scripture says, he that think it is standing, take heed lest he falls. When we think we got it all, be not deceived, he says. Evil communications, corrupt good manners, when we think we got it all. 
That's when the devil gets us. A lot of folks today following this path. We live in a world of misinformation and disinformation and just plain ignorance. But I want to know. I care we say follow him anyway. A lot of folks like that in this world today. Listen to the scriptures. It warns us. Now we can fall into a trap and be deceived and be corrupted. The spread of misinformation and disinformation creates confusion and makes it harder for people to discern and accept the truth. When we speak about misinformation, we are referring to the false or inaccurate information that is spread without malicious intent. It can result from mistakes or misunderstandings or incomplete knowledge. I agree. Sometimes that happens. But when you find the truth, get back to the truth. But there is what is called disinformation, which involves a deliberate spread of false information with the intent to deceive or manipulate. Disinformation campaigns are often orchestrated to achieve specific political, social, or economic goals. Even so-called spiritual enlightenment. Ignorance refers to people who simply choose that to be informed. Well, I like her and I like him. I don't care what they say. i following them to death. They choose to remain ignorance in their ignorance. We talked last time about the source of misinformation. Where it comes from. How is it? Uh, social media or political uh, uh, affairs or even from the very pulpit the claim to be holy and true how folks sensationalize these things we spoke last time of the effects of disinformation and misinformation it creates confusion and makes it Difficult people to discern the truth. This doubt can erode trust in credible sources of information and institution. What I find today, there are so many unchurched folks, and I got into discussion with some folks just the other day. Unchurched folks, and I we don't have a building right now. We get. We should be getting one soon. But folks, would ask, but where's your church? I direct them to our link here for now. On church, people in our society who are victims of the spread of misinformation, disinformation. They don't want to go to church. They want to see a church door because. What some church are teaching are just wrong. And they tell me, Pastor, they just want money. They don't care on my soul. Sad as it happens. This scheme has its origins in the Garden of Eden. We worked last week. Where Satan successfully used this information to deliberately deceive, deceive and trick the first family into moving away from God's truth. Let's read again Genesis 3, verse 1 to 6. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the God of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree that which in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Hear the warning there. Don't eat. She said, Touch. But the warning is, Lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, ye shall not surely die. For God hath know that in the day ye eat thereof, man, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. How many young people you know, their lives are destroyed because of the same line of lies. Mm -hmm. Go get a boyfriend or girlfriend, you can be good. Your life is going to be great. Next you know she dropped out of school. Got two babies in her hands. He gone after another, another sorry soul. Ah. Fix my soul. No good evil. That a serpent deceived. All right. And when, verse 5, verse 6, sorry. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did it, and gave also her husband with her, and he did it. We see in this narrative how disinformation and deception can lead individuals to make decisions that go against God's will. I know too many folks like this. It underscores the importance of discerning the truth and the consequences of being misled. First thing Satan did to cause Eve to question God's commands. It's the first thing the world does. Satan does in the world even today to cause folks to question what God says. Well, I'm not denying, he's saying, that God said something, but I'll tell you, it may not be what you're thinking. That's what the entire world does today. They will not come to you and boldly say, God didn't say that. But it adds something to it to cause a question with God saying. Hmm? Satan as he approached Eve in the firm of a serpent. He asked, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hmm. Ain't what she just told him, you know. The woman said to when he approached the woman, he said, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? This question was designed to create doubt and confusion about what God's command was. I said it happened to us, happens to us quite often. We can be so sure of what we're doing. All it takes is somebody come and say, you sure? <laughs> that is put on the left side. I mean, all of a sudden, all we think we know, and go to the window, even if we keep doing what we're doing, we still say, let me say, is that true? Let me think, is that true? Is that true? We begin to question ourselves. By framing the question in, in a misleading way, Satan subtly suggested that God's command was unreasonable and restrictive. The static planted the seed of doubt in Eve's mind, making her question the fairness and clarity of God's instructions. Not only did it cause her 
to question God's command. But he went on. He didn't stop there. He wanted the contradiction to contradict God's warning. Listen to what he says. After the, after Eve clarified to him, you know what? Hey, 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 stop. God did say, don't eat. Don't eat other tree. Lest you die. Or she should touch it, lest you die. Satan directly began to contradict what God said. He shall not surely die. God's warning was specific, clear, lest ye die. He's going to use some of the words God uses. You shall not surely die. We're going to add something there to give her a little comfort as she disobeyed God's command. Because God has explicitly stated Eating of the forbidden tree would result in death. Genesis 2.17 Satan's direct contradiction was a bold lie intended to dismiss the seriousness of God's warning and make Eve believe that there would be no real consequences for disobeying. Again, we find the same happening today. Let me give one example we used last week. God said, live a holy life. God said, one man to one woman. There are those who say you can love whoever you want. You can love someone of the, of the same sex. God understands. Once it is love, again, what could be wrong with love? That's what they say. What could be wrong with love? Well, God said there's much wrong with love if you're not doing it the way He says we should do it. Some say God is a God of love and holiness. He will not judge his creation. They fail to realize that he is also just God. And his holiness demands justice. God said, live a holy life. And there are those who say, live the way you want to live. And God understands. Same tactics being used by the enemy today. Don't worry. God understands your situation, how sorrowful you live in. God understands that you don't have no other option. That's what they say. And I'm here to tell you this morning, that's a big lie from the enemy. That's disinformation. Purpose is setting it away in a way to deceive. To distract from what God is saying. And God said, if you live an unholy life, if you live a life without Christ, you're going to hell when you die. It is a point on the man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. The devil wants to deceive and mislead. Causing men to contradict God's warning. A life without Christ on this earth is a life in hell with the devil. That's the word of God. Now today people say, no, you can't say those things. It sounds too harsh. You want people to believe you, accept what you're saying. You got to talk more reasonable, be more palatable in what you're saying. God is palatable here. He said, you eat of the tree, you're going to die. You continue living in sin, you're going to die. 
You died on Christ, you're going to hell. Straight up. He didn't stop there. Once you know this here tonight, this morning, Satan is relentless in his efforts to make you receive what he is saying and cause you to act, not to accept the truth of God's word. Now he tells, he tells her, hey, there's a promise, there's a benefit to you if you do what I tell you. Satan and appeal to the desire of the woman for knowledge and power by saying, For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Wait a minute. Let me ask a question here. Did God told Adam or Eve of any such promise? Oh, you don't worry about that. God don't want to tell you, but I want to tell you this. Friend, if God didn't tell you, don't hear from nobody else. I, I'm going to tell you this. God knows, man. When you eat this fruit here, sir, ha, listen to me now. You are going to get knowledge that would elevate you to be like God. He was enticing them with the prospect of become, becoming divine. God made you a human being, but you know what? You can become divine just by eating this. What heightened knowledge you would get, knowing good and evil. Huh? You can be like God. They, this is playing on human emotion and desire of self-elevation. A lot of folks want power. Look at some of these so-called Christian churches today. I just saw a man the other day. Oh, people are so gullible. Oh, my goodness. That's why you're responsible for what you hear and what you give up. He telling his poor church member how he is going to elevate, going to levitate and rise and go to heaven. And he begins to elevate too. He begins to levitate and he's going up past the pulpit and he's going up and the camera pull back and show you two white ropes pulling, up to, pulling him up to the roof and hands pulling him up to the roof. You get a hold of the roof to get in. And the gullible folks down there. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the world we live in today. There are still gullible folks who are not willing to follow what God says. Mm -hmm. Study to show yourself moving to God. Mm -hmm. A work man who need not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. Uh, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Listen to the word of God. You only caught in these tricks and lies of the devil because you know the word of God. Hang on to the word of God. He then, he then appeals to her senses of desire and desire. Satan's word led Eve to consider the fruit of the tree. Ooh, that looks good. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Wait a minute. Hold tight. Look at what she's recognizing. The tree was good for food. Wait a minute. She got a couple thousand trees in the garden that was good for food too. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Does it sound like something you are doing right now? God has given to you. And you say, but I want more. It is good for food, but I want more. Huh? But I want more than what God has given to me. 
Bible says on that, it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. I've met so many ambitious persons and destroyed themselves because what they saw is what they didn't have, but what they desired to have at any cost. At any cost. When God said, I give you what's sufficient for you. Don't let your eyes be caught on anything else. What I give you is what is good for you. Friend, I'm telling you right now. There are so many who are fallen by the wayside because they cannot accept what God is saying what they need overrides that what they think they need overrides that you know I've learned this in my short life on this earth I'm 52 years old and I've learned that literally I've learned this I ain't talking because it sounds good and spiritual I've learned that in accepting what God gives you now you stand a better chance of getting great things from God later mm. because he's not going to give you something you can't handle now and I've come to the place where I thank God so much often thank God he did not give me what I desire because listen, that would destroy me. I know it. I know I could not be living comfortably today if he give me what I desire. Let me give you one thing in my life. My wife. There were some beautiful young ladies that I had my eye on to get married to. But that's what I thought. God knew better. I'm glad that I didn't get what my heart desired. On the other hand, when I first saw my wife, I wasn't married to that woman. That were the words of my mouth, my heart. Because she was conducting a choir, just coming from Jamaica. Conducting a church choir, I was at college, just came from the airport, and saw her on the platform conducting a church choir. And she was serious about what she was doing. And I was like, that woman is going to rule her husband. <laughs> and no woman ain't ruling me. Sorry, sir. So my, my initial reaction to her was, no. But I was saying, yes to something else. And God was saying, I'm going to give you what's right for you. And I bless God for that every day. Because what I desired would have destroyed me. Mm -hmm. Where I am in my ministry today, I'm here because of my wife. Mm -hmm. Listen to me this morning. I'm here because of my wife. Because she allowed me to do what God has called me to do. And I often ask her the question, why are you marrying this crazy man? <laughs> Now she didn't marry me. God put us together. Because I'm a crazy man. There's some things you, you, you come to our life. There's some things we do in our lives that sounds crazy because God commands it to be done. Mm. And that's how we are where we are right now. We are blessed. Friend. We are so blessed. Mm. Don't let the devil entice you to go after things that God does not want you. What is history in your life today? I'm going to come out next week and share the remainder of this passage, of this, of this message, because there are beautiful truths I want to share with you. Examples in the scriptures of those who found it hard to accept truth. 
Now may God continue to watch over you, to give you the wisdom you need as it relates to accepting the truth. Don't let the devil deceive you today. Don't allow him, my friends, to cause you to question and misrepresent God's word, to contradict God's word, to, to, to give you false promises. So a lot of these folks today who are giving people false promises, so God wanted to be rich, they say. Every one of God's children must be rich. That's what he keeps saying. And Jesus himself said to us, you're going to always have the poor with you. What's he saying there? There's some people who will be poor. There's some folks who will be poor, friends. But a lie of the enemy today, through the mouths of these people, are telling God's people that they can be rich causing my anxiety and anything else. And all folks keep doing is making them rich. May God bless you. As you study to show yourself approved unto God. As you allow yourself not to be defamed. Not to be sorry. Not to be deceived. As you shun, put away from you. Get out of those cliques that will destroy what God is doing in your life. May God bless you. Father, this morning, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for us coming back to this message, Lord God, because I felt last week something was in not going right with all the cutting of the internet and, and then cutting out of it, and Lord God, I know there was someone who needs to hear this message. Mm. And as they hear and listen real carefully to God this morning, I pray they reply their heart unto wisdom and accept the truth of your word. Thank you for what you will do. We bless you, God. In the name of the only God and Son, Yeshua the Christ. Friend, God bless you. Thank you for joining us again this morning for this powerful message. May you join us next week as we continue to finish off this part of this message next week. See how God will speak to you.